The Addiction Podcast, Point of No Return, sponsored by Narconon Ojai. Hello, and welcome to The Addiction Podcast, Point of No Return. My name is Joni Siegel, and I'm the host for this podcast. Today's episode is episode number 190. When a person is addicted to drugs and or alcohol, the myriad of choices of treatments can be overwhelming. Narconon Ojai is a residential treatment facility that addresses the physical, mental, and spiritual aspects of addiction with a holistic, drug-free, proven, evidence-based, step-by-step program designed to free those trapped by addiction. For more information, call 1-866-231-5924. Today we'll be talking to a mother. Her name is Ellen Isaacs. She is a recovered addict herself. She has three sons and three gorgeous grandchildren. However, one of her sons died from a drug overdose. She has taken action to ensure that other mothers don't have to go through the same kind of loss. She educates people on the use of Narcan because Narcan might've been able to save her son. I know there's more to her story. Let's talk to her and find out. Her name is Ellen Isaacs. Let's talk to her now. Ellen, thank you so much for being willing to tell your story and also Ryan's story on the podcast. Thank you for having me today. Absolutely. Now you have your own story of addiction, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Start with your story, how 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 you got onto drugs, and then we'll talk about Ryan as well. Okay. Um, My story goes way back to when I was in my childhood. Um, And there was a lot of emotional abuse that went on in my home. Um, And there was addiction that went on in my home. Um, Over the decades now, I've learned through DNA and everything that... um, Addiction runs through every line of my lineage. And so, you know, doing a lot of research with that has also now given me the release that I needed to find the personal freedom from active addiction in its entirety. Um, But going back, I can remember there were times where I just never felt a part of anything. I didn't feel like I belonged anywhere. I was an only child um, of a single mother. My father abandoned me at birth. Um, He has a wife with three children. I didn't know anything. I knew about them. I shouldn't say I didn't know anything. I knew about them. They didn't know about me until about a year ago. Um, However, um, all that just sped out of control. I ended up wanting more and more and more of anything, whether it was um, attention, whether it was drugs, whether it was um, eating, whether it was shopping, I always had to have more of something. Um, You know, if I was in school and I was in marching band, I couldn't just do one thing in the marching band. I had to do everything in the marching band. Um, that should have been the first telltale sign that, you know, I was obsessive and compulsing about something, um, you know, but that's where it started. Um, and then I got married. I had children early on. I got very, very sick early on. And then the doctor started prescribing me medications and that's how my addiction really took off. So they prescribed medication when you were pregnant? For the sickness when you were yes, pregnant. they did prescribe medication while I was pregnant. I was having severe migraine headaches, and they did. They there was a doctor that did prescribe what he said was a non narcotic, which turned out to be a narcotic in hindsight. What was it? It was stadol nasal spray. Okay. Okay, you got to wonder sometimes what doctors are thinking, but we we can talk more about that a little bit later. So. So that started when you were pregnant and Mm -hmm. did that continue? Um, No, actually I was able to get myself right and I was able to straighten myself about and things were going really well and then I had a hysterectomy 
And when I had the hysterectomy, then all, along came with it the Oxy Express, the Sacklers, and that whole nightmare. And so that went on for about a year and a half, two years. And then I was able to come down off of that. And that's when I realized, you know, there's a bigger problem here than what I'm really recognizing to be a problem. Right. And I did a lot, a lot of research. How many kids did you have, Ellen? Uh, I have four boys. Four boys. Okay. So the hysterectomy then came after you had four, four boys. Okay. Yeah. Right. And of course, Purdue was claiming that OxyContin is not addictive. And we all know that that is a pile of horse manure. Um, when, what, what year did you get your hysterectomy? When was that? Yeah, it's very frustrating um, with everything that's going on in the news right now. And I keep, you know, my eyes is peeled with Sacklers because it's just been a rat race. And now twice they've gotten away with murder. And, you know, when is there going to be accountability? And that's why Ryan's advocacy became about 16 years of 18 years that I was in at the time he suffered. So just, just to get the dates out. So what was the year you had your hysterectomy, Ellen? When was that? That was um, September of 1999. Okay. So 99. And then when did Ryan become addicted to drugs? What happened with Ryan? Ryan had fallen off of a bridge and it was about a 70 foot fall. And he was in excruciating pain in his spine his entire life. And he also went on the Oxy Express. And this was about he was about 16 or 17 when that happened. So I want to say that was 1990, I don't know, 2001, 2002, somewhere around there. Did he progress from Oxy to other drugs? Yes, he did. Okay. Um, you name it, he was in it. And... He could never, ever get enough. And, you know, to, in spite of me taking him to meetings, in spite of me getting him the help that he needed, in spite of everything, it was just, there was never enough that I could do, you know, and they say tough love is the way to be. And I, I totally disagree with that especially since now that the NIH has come out with studies in 2016 naming this a disease of addiction and that we have to look at this and come at it with love and empathy and criminal justice reform and all the other stuff that goes with it so that we can turn the stigma around and educate everybody as a whole. Right. You know, one of the, and one of the things, and you you said it maybe a little bit differently is that you can do there was there was no way you could have fixed ryan ryan ultimately was going to have to do that himself and that is why there is such a thing as intervention that's why one of our the people that we know um, bobby newman that's why he has a job because his job is to get the addict to agree to treatment and you know, so many that we've spoken to former addicts and they, you know, it didn't matter when their mother wanted them to, it didn't matter when their father wanted them to, or their wife, they, they had to reach the point, which is the name of the podcast, the point of no return, where they know that they have to get help. When did Ryan pass away, Ellen? Um, it's coming up. It was on 11 one of 2018 at 11, 11 at night. Oh, just two years ago. Oh, yeah. I'm so mm -hmm. sorry for your loss. How do you know? I I know I know it was an overdose, but do you know any of the specifics of what occurred? 
I don't know a lot of the specifics that occurred and I got them banging down the doors at the um, in the legal industry trying to get this resolved because the month before they came out with a law in the state of Florida that if somebody dies at the hands of a drug overdose, that person can be charged with murder and we know who that person is. So you know who it was who who gave him the drugs or sold him the drugs. Yes. Were you able to get any legal action against that person? Um, everything I'm told is put on the wayside because they're way too busy. Right. <laughs> that's not, I mean, I, that's just wrong. I have to kind of, I'm on a gag order with a lot of this stuff, so I need to be quiet with some things, but Fair enough. it's very, very wrong what they're doing, and the system is completely broken. Fair enough. And that's you know, part of why this whole thing with Ryan's Opioid Pandemic Coalition advocacy came to be, because we want to get the word out there. We want people to vote recovery. We want people to know that their voices matter. We want to stop the stigma. You know, there's so many people across the globe that have been reaching to me and I'm kind of overwhelmed by it. But at the same token, I realize that there's a huge need. There is a huge need. And I like that you call it a pandemic. You know, it's been called the addiction epidemic. And then we had COVID and COVID was a pandemic. And I've said it over and over again. Addiction is a pandemic and it's not going to be gone when COVID-19 is no longer the front runner in the news. It's not going to be done, gone after November 3rd. And it, it, yeah, it's something that needs everybody. It needs to be addressed pretty much by everybody. I don't, I'm not addicted. I don't have a child that's addicted, but it doesn't matter. The fact that your son died, that affects me. And I, yeah, anyway, I'm just, I, I'm so sorry about Ryan. I didn't realize it had been so recent that he had passed away. He's wow. quite witty, I got to say. He's thrusted me into a world that I never thought I'd be in. And um, I've met so many wonderful angel parents along the way. And we've forged this great, I don't know, I don't want to say a foundation because it's not so much a foundation, but a uh, another type of coalition where people can talk to one another and be there to be supportive of each other. And um, because this is not just rolling out and stopping. I mean, this mental health process that we're going through is catapulting into suicides. It's catapulting into further and further into addiction and more deaths from addiction. Yep. You know, it, the families are suffering at PTSD and resources and um, light worker energy healers that work from the holistic aspect of it. So one of the things that I love that you guys do is you work with a company out of California that does do the holistic piece of it. That's right. Because it's so important. That's right. That's exactly right. So how did you come up with the Facebook group and the Facebook page that you have about Ryan's opioid pandemic coalition. How did that come about? Um, I remember the right night Ryan passed away and I remember kissing him on the forehead, saying goodnight, tucking him in and throwing my hands up in the air as I walked out of the hospital. And I said, enough is enough. I've had it. And I went through a period, I'd say about hmm, somewhat of a grieving process, but strange signs were happening and things were revealing itself to me. Um, and I could feel Ryan's presence everywhere I turned. And I started talking to some other angel moms who were going through some of the same experiences. So everywhere I turn now, Ryan's got something funny or some kind of joke that he's laying on everybody today like this. How did I know I was going to end up on a podcast? And 
when I got the email, I was like, oh, that's funny, Ryan, because <laughs> you know I don't like to talk. <laughs> you are listening to the Addiction Podcast, Point of No Return. For more information on the podcast or to reach out if you have a story you would like to share with us, go to our Facebook page by the same name, or you can email us at theaddictionpodcast at yahoo.com. Or go to our website, theaddictionpodcast.com, or call us at 727-314-7080. And please remember to subscribe to our podcast wherever you listen to podcasts and give us a five-star review. For more information on our sponsor, Narcanon Ojai, visit their website at narcanonojai.org. That's N-A-R-C-O-N-O-N-O-J-A-I dot org or call 1-866-231-5924. That's 1-866-231-5924. Sometimes, the hardest thing about getting someone into recovery is getting them to agree to treatment. Bobby Newman, a certified drug counselor with 30 years experience and an over 85% success rate as an interventionist, has created a series of 12 videos that you can use right now to learn every step to get your loved one to agree to treatment. Call 1-833-918-0008 today and say the word podcast to get a 10% discount. Or go to newmaninterventions.com and type in the word podcast for a 10% discount. This service comes with a free one-hour consultation with Bobby. He's obviously not done you know, he may be gone, but he's obviously not done with um, getting a message out. Yeah. Yep. And we're going to continue that until my last breath. I mean, I've met so many wonderful people just since I've opened my mind and said enough is enough and we're going to do something. We're going to make a difference. All of a sudden, all of these people have blocked into my life. And I'm just going with the flow of all the activists around the country. And it's huge. You know, it was interesting. I did go to your Facebook page and I saw that you had um, Gerald Posner there mentioned on your Facebook page and Darren Prince, who we just had on last week. And, you know, I think what's so important about what you're doing is that addiction this addiction pandemic is not going to go away just with you and me it's not it we need every single person really on the planet to do whatever they can do about this problem because it's 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 widespread you talked about the stigma and we've said this over and over again on the podcast it is not the poor dirty homeless guy under the bridge that is dying of overdoses it is the boys and girls who were brought up with loving mothers such as yourself who you know get prescribed a painkiller that is totally addictive and then go down that road and it it just it's going to take everybody to you know to get involved and i think so often um people don't get involved until they have a tragedy like yours and what when we started this podcast we want to keep putting it out there you need to get involved whether you have an addicted loved one or not you need to get involved whether you're addicted or not you know and if you have someone that's addicted don't wait until the worst case scenario happens to contact ellen and do something about it you know you can reach out to her they can reach out to you now right on facebook Yes, anytime, day or night, anybody wants to reach out. We have a team that is developed that are taking phone calls. We try to push everybody to NAMI and to SAMHSA and, you know, the 211 and all the different phone numbers that are out there, the suicide prevention hotline. You know, every nobody needs to feel that they're alone, you know, and... That's the hardest thing. I can remember early on um, going to meetings for 90 days every day and realizing that wasn't going to cut it. Making a decision for myself that no, I'm going to go to put myself in treatment. And I went to long-term treatment for four and a half months post being clean for 90 days. Wow. And people thought that that was just so bizarre. But what that did was give me such a foundation 
And I'm really blessed that I had that moment of clarity to be able to make that decision. Yeah. I don't know that I'd be able to be where I'm at today with the recent passing of my son if I didn't have the spiritual grounding that I obtained early on in my recovery. That's huge. It's huge. Over and over again, um, those who have recovered or are in recovery, they will tell us that they have to reach that spiritual moment. Um, you know, again, we call it the point of no return, but that spiritual moment where they realize they deserve sobriety and they deserve to have a good life and they deserve to have a family and kids. And it's, it's an important point. And I can definitely see how that would help you through the loss of your son. Your group does, um, I, I don't know if, if you've listened to all of our podcasts or how many you've listened to, but there's a group that we've talked to before called Learn to Cope. And mm -hmm. similar, they offer just an ear, just, you know, someplace where people can go and talk because you, you feel like you're alone. I can imagine if I had a son or a daughter who was addicted, I wouldn't know what to do. I wouldn't know who to talk to and where to go. And um, I think your message of the fact that they're not alone, that's huge. Yeah, nobody should ever feel that they're alone, not on this side or not on the other side. I mean, we're always together in the spiritual parallels of the universe. Um, they told me that early on, if I didn't stick with the winners and stay in the middle, I'd fall off the edges. And that is so very true. I, you know, I watched it happen with my son. And in spite of him having over a year clean, and then life on life's terms happened again, you know, unfortunately, he's no longer with us in human form, but he certainly is here in a spiritual form. He's making you work. And he has you out me there. working on overdrive. Because you, you did a big event recently for Overdose Awareness Day, right? Yeah. How many people, we how many people came? Actually, it, we didn't know what to expect. It was the very first one um, in Delray Beach. Being that that's the recovery mecca of the United States, we figured, why not? We choose something. There's something together. We got a lot of interference from the city not wanting to participate, which was very disappointing. Um, they just listened to us on the council meetings. Um, they knew it was going to happen, but just sat back and waited and watched to see what would happen. And, um, you know, on behalf of Ryan, I just pulled it together in three short weeks and we were off and running and it turned out to be a fantastic night for the first go around and nobody really knowing what they were doing, <laughs> but we figured we'd give it a shot. And, um, everybody's like, we got to do this again next year. We got to do it at the Broward Performing Arts Center. Oh, we need to do it up in Palm Bay. I'm really hoping that it's like a pebble in the pond and it just starts rippling across the country. If it just took one, you know, we didn't get all the things we asked for. We didn't get the purple lights and we didn't get them to do things we wanted them to do and to build the memorial wall, but we certainly got their attention. That's and awesome. It's got to start somewhere. It does. You're right. How many people came? Um, I would say there was about a hundred people that were there in total. And See, then and there that... were people online as well. People Facebooked it and it went out to a group called Team Sharing. Okay. Team Sharing is another group that's out there that um, they have a national organization and they have statewide organizations and they go and they do their thing and they have a truck that they ride around in that are wrapped with Team Sharing and everybody does with their part to talk to each other and a lot of the kids that had passed away were from Team Sharing and we did do a huge display on a 20 foot screen with all of the young people that we've lost to overdose and we did a whole tribute and memory to them underneath the new moon out by the beach and it was just spectacular and everybody was so entranced with what was going on and if it just saves one person's life just one person 
that's all that matters. Yep. Just one person. It didn't matter. You know, everybody wanted to know how much I spent. What did I do? It doesn't matter. Mm-mm. It's true. It's what I felt compelled to do. And if that's what I did and it saved one life or it helped one person get into treatment. It's all or helped it. a family member that's grieving find a grass group to go to. You can't put a price on that. You can't put a cost on that. And no. I think that your hundred will grow from there. I really do. Mm-hmm. I noticed in your Facebook, uh, on your Facebook page, that um, you were talking about the Purdue Pharma uh, settlement. Not equitable, huh? No, not at all. I think the only satisfaction that any of the parents at this point are going to get is if they're criminally prosecuted. Is there still a chance that'll happen? Um, There is a chance that that will happen. They did make an announcement a couple of days ago that um, there is a settlement being played out, but they are not going to be there's they're not going to be immune from criminal prosecution let me just put it that way that's appropriate i would say (laughs) you know so what's next for you and your group your facebook group or just your group of parents what's next um getting the word out there building the ladder i would say um we're talking to people about voting recovery you know, crossing the party lines and voting for the candidates that are actually out there supporting recovery solutions. Um, You know, we want to educate people, you know, point them in the right directions. There's so many different organizations out there. There's the Tunnel of Hope, which is Dan Schneider's People's Lobby. Yep. And, you know, I don't know how much you know of Dan, but he's trying We've to get that. We've had him on the lift. podcast. <laughs> okay. Well, we love <laughs> we know Dan. Yeah. We love Dan. Yeah. And then um, there's, you know, Ryan Hampton and Stuart Smith and Garrett Hade from the RAP project, the Recovery Advocacy Project. They're out in Nevada and they're pulling it all together as well with the boat recovery and training people on the grassroots of recovery and bringing it to the home front so that we can teach people and educate people on the home front and start making little changes here in the grassroots of the community and then let it envelope into something bigger and bigger. That's awesome. Yeah, you made me think of Dan when you were talking about your the person who sold your son the drugs and because Dan of course went after the, yep. he went after to find who it was that had shot his son because he didn't feel like the police department was really doing everything they could and so you know as you know he found that person. Um Ellen, I want to thank you for being with us today. I also if if you do any sort of event coming up Please be sure and let us know because as part of the promotion I do for the podcast, I send out, I send out an email every single week. And if you've got something upcoming, if there's an issue that you want us to make note of, totally willing to promote that in, in our email and get the word out that way to the people who receive it. You know, I know that they're doing right now, Joni, for the 1st of November, wrap recovery advocacy project is doing recoveryvoices.com they're having a whole rally for the election the recovery advocacy project okay Mm -hmm. i'll check that out because um yeah because i'll I'll get the word out about that that's great and then if people want to reach you is the easiest way through facebook just because your phone number is on there so they can just look up your phone number there yeah they they can get me however they want to get me they can email me text message me message me (laughs) (laughs) and you know they'd like to and that's huge because Mm -hmm. you know as we know people need they need to know who they can reach out to. Once again, Ellen, thank you so much for sharing your story with us and, and for sharing Ryan's story. It is our hope through the podcast that we can prevent other mothers having to go through the loss of a child. It's just, I can only imagine how devastating it is. And I, 
I know that Ryan is spurring you on. He's got me very busy writing a book and doing some light energy healing and doing a lot of positive work in society at large and keeping my own recovery in check. <laughs> so he's, awesome. keeping, he's keeping me busy. Yep. And that's a feat in itself. Also, please be sure and let us know when your book is done and published and ready to come out. I will. Absolutely. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you for joining us today on the podcast. I hope you liked the interview with Ellen. She breaks my heart. The death of her son breaks my heart. I don't want other mothers to have to go through that. That's why we do this podcast. So my message to you is if you are addicted, don't wait until after the holidays. Give your family a gift and go get clean and sober now. And if you have a loved one who's addicted, don't wait. Don't think that if you just wait until after the holidays, it's going to be easier. It's not. It's not going to be pleasant through the holidays. We've talked about it many, many times. You need to get them into treatment now. Don't end up like Ellen with your loved one dying from an overdose. It just breaks my heart, and I don't want that for anyone. We'll talk to you again next week. You have been listening to The Addiction Podcast, Point of No Return, sponsored by Narconon Ojai. For more information on Narconon Ojai, call 866-231-5924 or visit www.narcononojai.org. Narconon is a non-12-step rehabilitation program based on the works of L. Ron Hubbard.